This is Sarah with the National Weather Service in Sullivan with an update on our spring flood outlook. We have an above average risk for flooding this spring. Spring rain and rate of snow melt will be a big factor in where flooding occurs and how bad it will be, which really depends on who gets the heavy rain and how fast the snow melts. Ice jam risk is low to moderate and there's a, an above average risk of flooding of the river melts near Lake Michigan due to the high Lake Michigan water levels. 2019 was the wettest year on record across the state of Wisconsin and at the county level each county was one of the wettest on record. Looking back at precipitation data from the late 1800s, the past six years have been the wettest chunk of time on record. Last fall, precipitation was one and a half to two times average across southern Wisconsin. And this winter, precipitation has been about average. Soil moisture percentiles are in the 99th percentile across southern Wisconsin. And groundwater is also very high. So the ground can accept very little additional moisture and all of that water is going to run off more quickly into streams and low-lying areas. Stream flows have decreased recently. Southern Wisconsin has stream flow values right around normal and the other parts of South Central Wisconsin are above normal to a much above normal. This is good news but we're not out of the woods yet. The majority of our snow fell during the month of February and the snowpack has increased. The snow water content of that snowpack is about average to above average, depending on where you are across southern Wisconsin. Across the far southeast, where there's less of the snowpack, the snow water content is about average. But every, everywhere else, it's above average. Areas with the higher snowpack are somewhat more susceptible to flooding if there is a rapid snowmelt. River flooding typically occurs in mid-March into April when we have a rapid snowmelt or heavy rain. Looking at last winter compared to this winter in terms of temperature, you could see that last winter was much cooler than this winter. Temperatures were 5 to 10 degrees below normal, which caused a lot of ice to build up in rivers and ice to be very thick. This caused a lot of issues with ice jams. This winter, temperatures have been 0 to 5 degrees above normal. So there's not as much ice in the rivers and it's not as thick. So this is why we are thinking we have a low to moderate risk for ice jams and breakup ice jams going into spring because there's just not as much ice in the rivers. Lake Michigan water levels have been very high. They set a record for the month of January and they're forecast to break their monthly mean record high values every month from February to July. And they may even stay elevated for much longer. Levels may approach the all-time record high later this year. So this means water levels may be 4 to 18 inches above last year's levels. And lakeshore flooding and backwater effects of the high lake waters pushing up the river are expected to continue through spring and summer and possibly much longer. There are issues when you get a period of winds pushing the water up from Lake Michigan up of, into the rivers and causing backwater effects and inundation of areas that are away from the lake, but the flooding occurs much farther upstream. Looking ahead to the next week, we are expecting milder temperatures. Highs will be in the 40s, but they could be even warmer and we're looking at temperatures below freezing at night. This is a good scenario for a slow snow melt, which is what we want, but we will need to watch if the temperatures get warmer, that snow could melt quicker. We also need to watch for the potential for rain or snow midweek. Looks like most of the system is going to stay well south of southern Wisconsin, but we do need to watch for any heavy rain so that's something just to keep an eye on uh, with these milder temperatures coming up. Looking two weeks out, 
in the March 5th through 11th time frame, looks like the mild temperatures may continue. So this would mean additional snow melt for what's left at that time. But we will need to keep an eye out for a rapid snow melt if we do get much warmer temperatures. For precipitation, we're not seeing a signal one way or the other in terms of wet or dry. Uh, but it really only takes one storm with heavy rain to cause flooding issues. So we'll, we will just need to keep an eye out for that. Looking ahead to the March, April, and May timeframe, there's no signal one way or the other for temperature, but there are slightly enhanced odds for above average precipitation. While March is looking like it may be on the dry side, there is still time for additional snow. And then precipitation starts to increase during April and May. Potential impacts this spring, ice jams in locations that are usually not affected by ice jams with the rivers running higher than normal, and minor flooding. More impactful flooding is possible. That's just difficult to predict at this time. The backwater inundation, inundation flooding of the river mouths near Lake Michigan is expected to continue into the summer. And then soil damage, delay or prevention of crop planting, and travel impacts due to road or bridge dam damage. So in summary, we have an above average risk for flooding. This is because saturated soils will cause increased runoff and flooding potential runoff into rivers that are already high, which increases the river flood potential. And then the normal to above normal snow water content brings concerns for snow melt flooding if we get a rapid warm up. Almost everyone is at risk because of these conditions. So whether you're near a river or inland or in a rural area or urban area. And where flooding occurs really just depends on if we get heavy rain who gets the heavy rain, and then how fast the snow melts. So that is what we're watching for going into spring. And then the impacts of Lake Michigan will continue. Thanks, and have a great day.